from top secret airplane designs to Cold War era cover-ups. These are seven secret military and government projects. Number seven, Project Crested Ice, U.S. Air Force. Commonly referred to as the Thule Affair and informally known as Dr. Freeze Love, Project Crested Ice was a cleanup and containment operation in Greenland. On January 21st, 1968, a U.S. Air Force B-52 bomber carrying four hydrogen bombs was flying over Greenland as part of a top secret mission. Shortly after refueling, a fire started inside the B-52 for possibly the silliest reason ever. One of the crew members had put cushions on top of a heating vent. They eventually ignited and things spiraled out of control very fast. After unsuccessfully trying to extinguish the fire, electrical power was lost and there was too much smoke in the cockpit to operate the plane. The B-52 prepared for a crash landing at Thule Air Base, but it was too late. Six of the crew members made it out alive. The seventh was not so lucky. As the crew escaped, the plane pummeled towards sea ice in North Star Bay. The conventional explosives in the four hydrogen bombs detonated on impact, and the crash was officially designated a broken arrow, a military term for an accident that involves a nuclear weapon but does not present a risk of war. This is when Project Crested Ice officially began. Radioactive material spread across a giant area as the 102 tons of jet fuel had melted the ice sheet. Parts of the wreckage and nuclear bombs sank to the ocean floor. After numerous searches, one of the nukes is still missing. Buried deep under the sea, in total 70 U.S. government agencies and 700 workers were involved in the nine-month cleanup. More than 500,000 gallons of contaminated liquid were extracted at an estimated cost of about $66 million in today's money. Number 6. Project Aqualine, CIA. Would you believe me if I told you that the CIA was testing military drones? back in the 70s. Well, maybe that's a bit exaggerated, but it's true. Project Aqualine was the CIA's way of finding a better, safer way to spy on people. The prototypes included fake birds and fake dragonflies. The biggest one they built measured in at six feet long. That's a big bird. Of course, to make things more interesting, the drones were built and tested in Area 51. Because why not? The project started off great, but by the second year, McDonnell Douglas, the contractors tasked with building the drones, were asking for $100 million. That price was too steep, even for the US government. By the end of negotiations, the project was canned. But do not think for a second that the CIA doesn't have fake flying birds all over the world today. Number 5. Operation Chrome Dome, US Air Force. The Cold War was no joke. Tensions were high and the risk of a first strike was too much for both USSR and the USA. The US Air Force wanted to make sure that there was a chance for a speedy response before the time of ICBMs. So what did they do? They started Operation Chrome Dome. Multiple B-52 bombers loaded with thermonuclear weapons were in the air at all times, rotating around Greenland, Northern Canada and the United States. <laughs> Just kidding, there was also B-52s flying over Alaska and parts of Europe, daily, non-stop, for eight years. Remember the B-52 that crashed in Greenland? Wouldn't you know it, they were flying around as part of Operation Hardhead, a subset of Operation Chrome Dome. That wasn't the only accident either. In 1961, a B-52 crashed in North Carolina. The captain dropped the payload moments before bailing. Declassified information in 2013 leads many to believe that one of the nukes came dangerously close to detonating. Another B-52 crashed in 1961, this time near Yuba City, California. Then in 1964, the Savage Mountain B-52 crash happened. In the middle of winter, the nukes on board were found relatively intact in the middle of the wreckage. The only survivors were the two pilots. Another incident occurred in 1966. This time, it was over Spanish territory. The B-52 bomber collided with the air tanker during mid-air refueling. One of the nukes landed off the coast. The other three scattered around the small village of Palomares. 
the non-nuclear explosives detonated in two of the nukes. Their results were not pretty. 490 acres of land was contaminated with plutonium. The incident at Thule Air Base was the final nail in the coffin for Operation Chrome Dome. Number 4. Operation Garden Plot, U.S. Army and National Guard Known as the Department of Defense Civil Disturbance Plan, Garden Plot was the U.S. Army and National Guard's answer to civil unrest in the mainland. After the major riots in Watts, Newark, and Detroit, the federal government wanted a swift and strong presence at any event that could be considered a riot. This included racial unrest and anti-Vietnam, anti-draft rallies. To quote, if any civil disturbance by a resistance group, religious organization, or other persons considered to be nonconformists takes place under Appendix 3 to Annex B of Plan 55-2, hereby gives all federal forces total power over the situation if local and state authorities cannot put down said dissenters. Sounds a bit scary, doesn't it? The LA riots of 92 were the last time we saw any action guided by Operation Garden Plot. After 9-11, the operation was superseded by US NORTHCOM Con Plan 2502. It's very likely that this new plan was active during the hunt for the Boston bombers. Do you agree or disagree with this operation? On one hand, it is constitutional. On the other, a free speech rally could be considered a riot in a matter of minutes. Interesting stuff to think about. Number 3. Operation Wash Tub, US Air Force and the FBI Seriously kids, the Cold War was no joke. In the early 1950s, the FBI with the help of the Air Force ensured that there was sleeper cells of spies in Alaska. Yes, Alaska. The feds were worried that in the event of an invasion, Alaska would be lost to the Soviets with no easy way of retaliating. Because the FBI planned for the worst case scenario, 89 people were given equipment and trained for covert services in case the Ruskies invaded Alaska. The plan remained until 1959, when Alaska finally became the 49th State of the Union. It turns out those 89 people knew how to keep their mouth shut because we would have never known about this if it wasn't for a 2014 Freedom of Information Act request. Number 2. Project A119, US Air Force Finally, a project that was crazy, but also offered answers to scientific questions. The US Air Force was given a simple task, nuke the moon. They wanted to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon. It would be an incredible show of force since the explosion would have been seen faintly by the naked eye on Earth. It was believed that the explosion would boost domestic morale and give the US government a step up in the space race, which by the way, they were losing at this point. The Soviets also had similar plans, but they too decided against blowing up the moon. Some PR intern in the 1950s had to decide if lobbing nukes at the moon would be seen in a positive or negative light. Poor guy. Fun fact, Carl Sagan was part of the team tasked with understanding and predicting the effects of the explosion. Project A119 was canned and the government decided it was better to send people to the moon, not bombs. Good choice. Number 1. AMSA, US Air Force By the late 1960s, the US Air Force wanted to combine the range and payload of a B-52 with the Mach 2 speeds of the B-58 Hustler. There was numerous studies, designs, and contests between contractors that cost millions of dollars. At one point, the XB-70 was hailed as the next best thing to replace the B-58. But after the introduction of surface-to-air missiles, the $1.5 billion project was cancelled. The US Air Force was not done yet though. By 1977, another prototype plane was built. This one you might be very familiar with. They called it the B-1A. However, due to cruise missiles and the work on a new stealth bomber, the Advanced Manned Strategic Aircraft Project was cancelled. In 1981, the program was restarted and AMSA jokingly became known as America's most studied aircraft. 
By 1986, the final design version, known as the B-1B Lancer, entered service as a nuclear bomber. All 100 units were delivered by 1988, at a general cost of about $400 million each in today's money. In the 1990s, the plane was converted to conventional bombing use, and by 2036, the B-1B will be retired. The U.S. Air Force hopes to replace most active units with the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider, which started development in 2014. That plane will cost an estimated $560 million per unit. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.